all right i see some of you guys joining the stream you are welcome back once again to today's section so in today's video you're looking at inventory control and turnover so if you are just new on this channel hey what are you waiting for make sure to smash the like button of this video subscribe to this channel by this way once we go live or release out any new video you'll be the first person to get it right away so thank you for joining us once again thank you for joining us so we have covered a lot of business math topics just check the links or the check the description of this video we have a lot of links you can watch and then you get much more better with business mathematics in that light so today we are looking at inventory control and turn over so you are welcome back once again so make sure to like this video if you haven't subscribed subscribe to the channel so that by this once you go live you're able to get our updates right away so today we are looking at inventory control and turn over that's what we are considering for today's video so let's get started let's get started but make sure to invite friends to join this awesome session so that we can all learn in that light so that we can all learn in that light so today we are looking at inventory control and turn over what is inventory so inventory once you're head of inventory in business you are talking about what goods that the business whether manufacture or purchase outside for what resale to customers whenever you're talking about inventory you are talking about what goods that the business manufactured if it's an in-house they manufactured in towns or when they purchase outside they also can also purchase this out and then resell back to what customers that's what we call what an inventory so in more technical term inventory can also be called what a merchandise so in inventory are talking about a merchandise of goods that a business resell to it what customers whether they manufacture things out or they buy it out from external i mean they buy it out, let's say they buy it from outside so that's what we call what an inventory so when it comes to inventory control okay you being a manager, or you being, let's say, a production manager, or you being an inventory manager, you expect that inventory will be kept in a way that we ensure that the inventory will be of what good condition. Is that okay? So when you keep inventory, the goal here is to ensure that the inventory will be of good condition. So at a good condition, you ensure that it doesn't go spoilage. You keep in certain facilities and materials or certain strategy that will ensure that the inventory kept at what at good condition that was spoiling. So when it comes to inventory control, we are talking about keeping of what inventory or keeping of stocks at their optimum what level. Here the optimum level you mean here where we don't have excess of inventory or we don't have a shortage of inventory. What do we mean by excess or shortage? By this way if you have excess of inventory mean that your capital is going to lock up. The capital that you use to I mean engage in a business going to be what's locked up. Is that okay? So inventory control it will ensure that you don't keep excess of stock so that you don't cause capital lockup or you don't keep shortage of stock so that you don't get out of stock. Because when you get out of stock too, you lose what loyal customers. But at the end of the day, the customer is going to shift their brand and move on to what other competitors who is dealing with the same what inventory because at that time you weren't having stock. So inventory control comes in to ensure that you keep stock at their optimum level to ensure that there is no excess or shortage of what inventory within the production setting or within the organization and also to ensure that the inventory are kept at what good condition so when it comes to inventory within the business we have three forms of inventory okay we have three forms of inventory in business we have what we call the raw material as an inventory we have what we call the post uh, what we call the work in progress, work in progress or work in process or inventory, and the last we call, what we call the finished what goods. So basically, we have three types of inventory within the business. We have what we call the work raw materials, we have what we call the work in process or work in progress, and we have what the last we call is as the finished what goods. So these are the three forms of inventory that a business keeps and also resell to their customers. But most of the times in businesses and in normal business, it is only the final output that majority or let's say 99 percent of it sell out to what eight customers that's why we call what a merchandise is that okay so with merchandise you have three forms you have what the raw materials you have the work in progress or the work in process and we have what the finished what goes so that is an inventory and an inventory what control so that is what we need to know when it comes to inventory. and you're talking about turnover to you are talking about the number of times you would convert your inventory to sales so we get into more details about turnover when we get there in that light so let's move on so actually let me give some acknowledgement here this slice i'm using is not my own slice it's coming from 
a lecturer in KMS School of Business, Dr. Muntaka. Actually, this is a slide that I'm using. I'm using a slide actually for academic purpose for presentation. So it's not coming from me. So I acknowledge the source of the slide that I'm using. So that is that I also need to what, know. So these are the outline. First of all, it defines definition of inventory controls. I think we have talked about it. Methods for computation of what inventory. So we have a number of methods that we can use to value what inventory. You can use to value inventory. So when it comes to inventory valuations, you also understand it much more better. And then also, we talk about computation of what inventory turnover. Then we will go through all of them in that light. So having said that, we said inventory of a business is the amount of what goes, right? It has on hand at a particular time. So we have retailers and wholesalers also usually have only one type of inventory. As I said, you call it what? A merchandise. So merchandise is also called what? An inventory that the business would use to what? Have, which is the goods they sell. I mean, the goods they sell to what? Their customers. So in a merchandise business, inventory is a merchandise. In a mercantile, sorry, in a mercantile business, inventory is a merchandise that they sell for what? Sell. So when it comes to as such, it will ordinarily be converted to what cash in less than what one year. So, inventory that a business keeps and we can convert within less than a year, we call it what current assets. So, let's take note of it that current assets are inventory or are assets that we can easily or its aspiration or it in terms of duration and benefits last within what one year. That's what we call current assets and assets whose benefits last within one accounting year or within one period one year period of what the current access and as i said if the business inventory they do whether they purchase it outside or the manufactured in-house if they manufactured in-house they're going to have what we call raw materials as you can see here then goods in process or work in progress and what we call the finished word goods so these are the three stocks that you see or inventory whenever you don't hear of inventory you can also hear what we call stocks Stocks is the same thing as what inventory. Once you don't hear of inventory, you can also hear of what stocks or goods that the business what sell to their customers. So this is the thing that you need to know when it comes to what inventory. So they are saying that at least once a year, business undertake a fiscal account. So when it comes to inventory valuation, that's where accounting comes in. So we have even two types of what stock taking when you're accounting stocks. We have fiscal stock taking, we have what we call the perpetual what stock taking. The fiscal stock taking where stocks are counted what fiscally by hand is that okay by hand and by eyes but when it comes to perpetual stock taking where we use what computer we use computer system to what undertake the, the stocking of the inventory i hope that is clear so we we'll exploit much more better when you get there in that light so let's take note of that so these are the things that give you more information about inventory if inventory is kept at minimum level less kept as i was saying to ensure that we don't have excess or what, shortage of stock. So at the minimum level, less capital is what needed to operate the business and the selling of inventory is increased. And also the risk of having old and expired or unusable merchandise is what reduced. So when you keep inventory at the minimum level, meaning that you use what less what capital. But when you keep inventory at the maximum level, means you're going to use what huge capital and then you will need a lot of what things that we should put in place to ensure that the inventory is going to be kept at a good condition, even securities measures you can also put in place that are going to also attract what cost so at any time you are keeping them you expect that you keep them at the optimum what level so that there wouldn't be any excess or shortage of what inventory so let's take note of that so this is just by the way so we are saying that inventory to inventory when inventory is counted a description of each item the quantity and the unit cost or the retail price and the extension that's quantity multiplying the price are recorded on inventory sheet. So this is a, uh, an example of an inventory sheet. This extension that you see here, whenever you are talking about extension, here we are talking about where you want to find the total amount of the inventory, where it takes into account the price of the inventory and the quantity, the number of quantities you have in stocks and the price per unit of that inventory. When you multiply the number of quantities you have by the price per that quantity, you get what we call what an extension. So extension is the same thing as what an amount, total what amount that we can obtain from the quantity of what that inventory with respect to its price per unit. So let's take note of it. So once you have of extension, that's what we mean. Quantity multiplying what the price per that quantity in that line. So these are just a sample description form of what inventory sheet. So these are how you're going to see it in terms of their quantity, their unit price, and then the extension in that case. So 
let's take it. so these are just a description so let's take note of that so let's move on to inventory inventory sorry inventory or devaluation inventory valuation what is an inventory valuation so whenever you're talking about inventory valuation okay we are talking about where a business want to find a price or want to find the value that they will place on the inventory whether you want to find the, the price or the value you're going to place on the inventory whether it's a, an ending inventory or we also call it the closing inventory or any inventory at any level so inventory valuation you're talking about a process of placing a value on the inventory or the merchandise that you have in stock or that the firm has what in stock that's what we call what inventory valuation so in valuation we try to add what monetary value to the inventory we try to add monetary value to the inventory that's what we call inventory valuation so as you can see here you're saying that it's an act of placing a value on a merchandise a firm what has in stock is that okay so when it comes to that we are saying that it's not easy to place this value on each of the items and so many large companies use what so much as I said, when it comes to inventory stock taking, we use fiscal, we have fiscal stock taking, we have what we call perpetual inventory stock taking. When we are using the fiscal, we are doing actual accounting, fiscal accounting for the inventory. But when it comes to perpetual inventory, we are using what computerized systems to actually place value. So as we are saying, it's not easy to do that, but then most of the time, most of the time in business, most large companies, they use what we call perpetual inventory and they will use computer to assist them to place what value on the inventory that they have in stock. I hope that is clear. So that is something that you need to know when it comes to inventory valuation. We are talking about placing value on the inventory that the firm has. I hope that is clear. So that is something that we need to know when it comes to inventory valuation. So when new items are received, when it comes to inventory, when new items are received, we are saying that the quantity, the size, and the cost of each item are placed in computer. So when you are using a virtual inventory, that's where actually you undertake that activity. At any time you receive any new quantity, the size, the cost, and everything you just being recorded on a computer to show that you are using perpetual what inventory and then we have a sales clerk also enter this product course most of the time we call it the bar course we exploit them when they get to the methods of what valuing inventory we have actually a number of methods at, at this present they're going to use just six methods to value inventory okay so we're going to we'll discuss them as and when we move along in that case so as and when you receive new order it's been entered in the computer and then we get to know the update of the inventory you have in stock in terms of the cost and in terms of what their size and every other thing that you need to know. So far as the stock size and receive an inventory valuation is also concerned. I hope that is clear. So that is something about inventory valuation. You want to place value on the inventory the firm has in stock. Whether it is the beginning inventory, whether it is the ending inventory or the inventory they want to sell to their customers how you place value on it so what we call what inventory valuation so let's take note of that so now we are moving on to the various types of inventory valuation methods that we use first one we are discussing is what we call using universal product code so at this point if you have any question please let me know before i continue let me know before i continue let's also make sure to share this video so that others can also join us make sure to share this so that others can also join us is that okay let's keep sharing and liking so that others can also join us in that case so if you have any question please let me know before i continue in that light let's keep sharing this video so that others can also join our discussion in that case All right, so we are starting with we are starting with the universal product code. It's one of the methods that we use to value what inventory. It's one of the methods. So, as the name suggests, universal product codes here we use what codes. Most of the time called what bar codes that will always appear on the item when they are sold in stores. I hope that is clear. So when it comes to UPCs, they are just a strips, also known as what bar codes that appear on many items sold in stores. So for us to know the quantity of inventory we have in stock, and if you are using universal product codes here, more like what a technological form of what finding the number of inventory you have in stock in terms of quantity, the price, and then the amount, 
most of the time you use these barcodes to scan most of the time you scan you scan it and then you see that there's the quantity you have there's your price and then there's what the value that you can actually derive from that image so they are usually ranging from six to three digits depending on the country of origin so most of the time the digits that you are talking at the barcodes that you can see here they are saying that they have been ranging from what six to three digits and then the universal product will help business greatly in keeping track of inventory especially on what computer as i was saying here we are using technology computer to value what our inventory so business that cannot afford a computer take count of what merchandise in stock physically so as i said earlier on as i said earlier on we have for two ways of what dealing with what stock taking and with respect to inventory valuation we have the physical stock taking, we have what we call the perpetual stock taking. If you are using physical stock taking, then we are dealing with actual counting of stocks. We are dealing with actual counting of stocks. We are dealing with actual counting of stocks. Whether you count it monthly, whether you count it or quarterly, semi annually, or annually, it can even be daily. Is that okay? So you have that physical stock taking. Here yeah, we count it by hand. But when you are using perpetual, that's why you're using what computer to do the counting of for the inventory. I believe that is clear. So that is where you are using what universal product codes. Right, so here we use barcodes to deal with what accounting of the inventory. So when inventory is taken weekly, monthly, quarterly, or semi-annually, it's term as well called periodic or stock taking. Please let's take note of this. Once you have the periodic inventory, periodic inventory of stock taking, we are talking about where inventory is being counted at certain period within the cycles of the business, whether it's weekly, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or let's say yearly. It depends on the period. So the period that will Actually, the business who engage in the account of the inventory will determine their periodic inventory they have for that period. I hope that's also periodic inventory. I'm talking about inventory inventory is being taken weekly, month. So the period based on the period they take the inventory, you can call the inventory act or the activity they engage on as what periodic what inventory stock taking. So let's take note of that. So periodic inventory is useful in detecting what losses resulting from what theft and other stuff. So most of the time we use this to ensure that there wouldn't be any losses and stolen of what inventory within the store so when you're using universal product codes here you're using barcodes to actually do the fiscal counting or check for the stock valuation and other stuff in relation to that so if you have any questions please let me know before i continue So let's move on to what we call using specific identification method. Those are another method that we use to also value inventory. All right. So when it comes to specific identification method, here is very simple. Here we use what alphabets and numbers. Okay. Here we use alphabets and numbers. We use alphabets and numbers to value the stock. In that, what what do I mean here? In terms of where, in terms of let's say the price of the inventory the quantity and even where the inventory is being placed that's where universal specific identity method what comes in universal sorry specific identification method where we are using what alphabets and numbers to value the inventory in terms of the price in terms of the quantity and even the shelf or the place in which the inventory is going to be placed i mean the, the location the inventory is going to be placed is what we call specific identification method so there's an inventory control method that involves the use of what numbers or letters i was said or both to categorize the items and indicates what their cost as i was saying the price of the inventory and any other control that business seeks to what introduce into it what inventory control system so here let's say within this method let me let me give more explanation within this method each item is cost coded right so each item is cost coded or identified. For example, a stock will use a code to represent cost, noting that all costs are two or this one. So they are saying that, for example, if stock can use what uh, code to represent what it costs, and they are saying that here each cost have for two decimals. So let's say, for example, let's say if I have an item bearing, let's say, M80 as mat, this is what specific identification method is saying. If I have mat, the idea is that it will have a cost of what? 2 CD 35 pesos. There's a there's a explanation behind. If it is used for identification of session in the warehouse, then the item bearing mark will be in session, session 2. So here, the session 2 here, they mean 
the course right and then the shelf three it's going to be the three going to be the shelf in which you can get the inventory and then the five going to go to the slot is that okay is that okay so here they will use coding system where we use what alphabets and numbers to make representation in terms of the cost in terms of even the session that you have the inventory and then we have the chef even which it's been even the slots within it so here most of the time they will give you i mean a combination of what alphabet and they will tell you that hey this is let's say using this one or let's say using let's say uh let me use let's say f l f e l fell so fell means that means that the f which is five going to be what the cost which is what five is going to be the session that the inventory is found and then the e is going to be the six share for six and then the last one seven is going to be what the slot or seven within which we can find what i mean the inventory is that okay so that is something that you need to know and the cost aspect comes in there saying that where all costs are being categorized as what two decimal what places so mean that if i should pick this f e l means that i'm going to have what five cities five cities 67 what pesos five cities 67 what pesos so that is how using specific identification method what works in terms of cost the location they're going to have it and even the price associated with what the inventory in that case so let's take notes of that so the coding system has to be clear and known to what all employees so when you're using the coding system as a way of what valuing stock or controlling stocks you should be able to explain it to all the employees in the business so that they can easily what understand it so that at any time there is any let's say sales within the business actually once they understand the coding system they can easily what to deal with them then they are good and most, most of the time these things are actually engaged where we are using computerized system to do it and do stuff where the business link computerized systems of what value inventory to this method so that you can easily what help them to actually deliver their intended what activity within the business so that is specific identification what's code here we use what alphabets and numbers in identification if there is any question please let me know before i continue Alright, since there is no question, let's move on. So this is just a sample form of inventory valuation. Sample inventory valuation form. This is how it looks like. When it comes to inventory valuation, this is how it looks like. This is how it looks like. Clement, you're saying that you should go over. Please take your time and then also we go back to the question so that you go back to I mean the presentation so that you can get everything back. If you just join us, you are welcome back to this live stream. Kindly make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and make sure to follow through so that you get to know what we are talking about in that light. So this is a sample of inventory valuation form. So as you can see, you have the name of the business, Terra Limited, right? Yeah, and you have what the store. So most we call it the store ledger card actually. So at any time there is any new inventory coming into the business, the receipt part of this what inventory valuation is going to receive it in terms of what their quantity in terms of their quantity in terms of their quantity the rate we mean what the price per the inventory and then amount we mean the extension where you multiply the quantity by what the price or the rate of the inventory so at any time there is new order coming into the business the receipt side take care of what these words inventory we are receiving is that okay and then at any time we are selling out some of them you are sending some of them to our customers. That's where the issue side also will take care of it. So the you see side, you can also call it the purchases. That's on the part of the business. And then the issue side, or you can also call it the revenue or the sales. So at any time, there is all the sales of inventory or the issue of inventory. We also record it at the issue side with respect to the quantity, the rate, the, I mean the price of the inventory. That's, so here, at the price or the rate level, it is based on the method that you're going to use that will determine the price that you're going to put place on the quantity that you are selling out to, to customers. I hope that is clear. And by amount, you mean the extension, the quantity, 
and then the price or the rate for the inventory the total when you multiply the multiplication of the quantity and then the price per that quantity will determine the amount or the extension and at any time you receive any any new order within the business you update your balance so let's say we received let's say 60 let's say let's say 60 toffees at let's say two Ghana sellers is that okay so here all that I will do is just record the quantity 60 here and at the price of two here and then I'll multiply 60 by two and it's going to give me what that's going to give me 120 I hope that's clear so once I get I'm going to record at the receipt side I'm going to update the receipt side the balance also need to reflect so that we get to know what we have in stock now so the balance is going to be so all I'm going to just do the same thing by recording the 60 here as a quantity and then record the amount as what 120 so at any time there is a new receipt you update your balance so when there is a receipt it adds up to your balance your balance is going to increase but when there is any issues or when there is sales it reduces your balance so let's say at the end of the day we, we sold 30 toffees at let's say let me use let's say at the price of let's say the price of two cities the same price of two cities to our customers so in that light it's going to be 30 at the quantity the rate of two and going to get what three multiplied by two is going to give us what six so they're going to give us 60 right so at any time there is issue it's going to reduce our balance so we're going to subtract the quantity from the quantity and then subtract the amount from the amount so here if you are using this method then here you subtract you're going to have here what 30 so you underline it by saying that this is what you have currently so when you subtract 30 from this you're going to leave it to 30 and then subtract the amount to from the total amount 120 you're going to leave it to 60 so that's going to determine the balance you have in terms of quantity and then in terms of the amount or the extension i hope that is clear so this method i actually am using we call it what the first in first we will get the fifth method so actually the method that's going to prescribe the price system you're going to place on the inventory that you are issuing out towards your customers or the sales that you are making at the end of the day that is going to determine so actually the method is going to determine which price system you're going to use to value your inventory so let's take so this is just a sample of inventory valuation that we are talking about so let's move on to the weighted average or the cost method what of valuing inventory this is also another method of valuing inventory and it's actually very simple that you can go to go so before we get to this let's see if you have any question please let me know before i continue with this in that case so when it comes to the weighted or the average cost method it's actually very simple you are saying that this method value items in inventory at the average cost of what buying them so what do you mean by average average here means you want to find what the, the the overall let's say the overall price or the overall cost of what the item take into account numerous words batches of quantities and their prices that's what we mean so for example let, let's 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 take an example Let's take an example. Let's say, let's say I have a set of batches of what inventories coming in, and it's called toffee. So let's say first batch I receive sixty batch at a price. Let me use white so that it gets it. So let's say I first of all receive what a batch of sixty toffees at a price of let's say at a price of let's say one dollar. Is that okay? Right. And then let's say I also receive another order, let's say that was 70 toffees at a price of let's say three dollars. Is that okay? So let's say I have just these two words, batches of inventory and with respect to what their cost per unit or their price per what unit. I hope that is clear. So when it comes to this method, weighted or the average cost method is saying that first all that you need to do if you want to find the value that you're gonna place on the inventory, whether it's an ending inventory or the inventory you are issuing it out to. Your customer or the sales that you're making the price going to as a business you're going to place on that inventory that you bought from outside and sell it to your customer this is all you're going to do when it comes to weighted or the average cost method all that you need to do all that you need to know here is that first of all you need to consider the stocks that you have in the, i mean the inventory you have in stocks 
is that okay you need to consider inventory you have in stock and there are batches that you have and then all that you need to do is buy what finding what individual extension or individual what amount so this is what i mean by the individual amount or individual extension with respect to what the batches so let's say i have these two batches 60 at what one dollar and then 70 at what three dollars so this is what you're going to do by extension we mean what the quantity multiplying what by the price is that okay so here 60 by one is going to give me what 60 i hope that is clear so 60 dollars and then here 70 by three dollars going to give me what it's going to give me 210 more dollars so here's why you're going to, going to add what this for two so 60 plus 210 is going to give me what 270 dollars so this is going to be in terms of what the amount the total amount respect to these two or two batches so let's say this one batch one and this one's batch two so b1 b2 i hope that is clear and then so once you're able to find the amount that's by extension the total extension with respect to batch one and batch two you also find their total what quantity so what is 60 plus 70? 60 plus 70 is going to give me what? 130. I hope that's clear. So now I know that in terms of the amount or extension is what? 270 what? Dollars. And in terms of the quantity, it is what? It is, let's see, it is what? 130. 130 tough is that we have here is that okay that in terms of quantity and in terms of what the amount so the weighted average or the average cost method is saying that all that you need to do is to what find individual batches with respect to their their extension or the amount okay so all that you need to do is multiply the quantity you have now the quantities that you have now with their unit prices is that okay and then they, they add up all the individual amount or extension you have is that okay with respect to the batches and also add up all the quantities you have with respect to individual batches and every day they want what you're going to get as the total amount with respect to all the batch and the total quantity with respect to all the batch you divide the total amount all right that you have by the total quantity from all these what batches and whatever you're going to get becomes the price you're going to use to place on the inventory you have in stock whether you have it in stock or whatever you are let's say a sale they are making for the period or let's say any beginning inventory is that okay so whatever you're going to obtain after the amount by the quantity is that okay becomes what the price you're going to place it on the inventory whether you are into sales or you want to find the value of what your ending inventory or the closing inventory for the period so that's what we mean by the weighted average cost method the weighted slash average cost method is that okay? so here first find the total cost of all the items purchased in the period as we have already indicated so that's what i've done here all right and then compute the average cost by dividing the total cost here by the total number of items so the items were also 60 and 70 so that was given as 130 and then the total cost was also 270 so once you're able to get that so here you're going to go 270 divided by what 130 i hope that is clear divided by one third. So once you get that, whatever you're going to arrive at this figure or this word operation, then that becomes for the price. So they are saying that at the end of the day, step three, you multiply the average cost by the number of items in inventory at the time of the valuation of valuation to obtain what the inventory would value. So whether you want to find what the inventory ending inventory that's the closing inventory you have in stock or you want to find the value of the inventory you are into sales you can use this price to what to be placed on that inventory that you can get to know the value of that inventory at that spot i hope that so that's what we call weighted or average cost method of what valuing an inventory so let's take note of that if there is any question please let me know before i continue if you just join us you are welcome back to this section 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 so keep on liking this video and share with your friends and subscribe to this channel as well so by this one go live you're able to get updates on our live videos and you have to so engage on in that case so if there's a question please let me know okay giant saying that the sound is very poor please check your network is that okay i think the sound is looked very cloudy here it's very clear so please and please check your connectivity so that you can join us in that light let keep sharing and invite others to also join this platform so that we can get more engagement on this video so there is our first question that we are having
So we have so if there is any question, there is no question. Then let, let's move on in that case. KB and Glad Wooden Limited had made the following purchases. Purchases for the of the EFF backpack during the year. So let me read again. KB and Glad Wooden Limited made the following purchases of EEF backpack during what the year. Backpack during the year. So we have for the beginning inventory. And we have January, March, we have July, and then we have October. So these are the periods within which we purchase inventory and then we make sales as against those two period in that light. I hope that is clear. So these are the items we have in shop now. And let's see what the requirement of the question is. They're saying that at the end of the year, there were 70 backpacks inventory. Use the weighted average. We are used to use the weighted average method to find the inventory value. To find the inventory value. So mean I want to find the value of what the 70 backpacks that was selected. So here we call this 70 backpacks as what ending inventory. So meaning that the idea behind here is that we have sold all these what quantities of backpacks we have here and we are left with what just 70. So we have to use what the weighted average method to find the inventory value. This is what the ending event. So in doing that, all that you need to do, as I said, with the weighted average, all that you need to do is to compute for individual total cost with respect to the batches, okay? And after once you get the total cost, add the total cost of all these batches or period, and also add all the quantities you have, or the, I mean, the quantity you have for the period. And also, once you're able to get that, divide the total cost by the total quantity so that you get to know the unit price. That price is going to obtain. That's what you're going to use to what value the ending event. So the idea is that here we have sold all the backpacks and we are left with what 70 backpacks of inventory. And that's why we are told to what value it. Is that okay? Using the weighted average method. So this is what you're going to do. So you're going to find the extension of this. You're going to find the extension of this. So by extension, you're gonna multiply. So here you're gonna this are going to be, this is what you're going to do. You multiply the quantity by their price. Multiply the quantity by their price, quantity by their price, quantity by their price. Is that okay? So 20 by 7 is going to give me what? So let me have it here. It's going to give me going to give me 1,400. I believe that is clear. 1,400. Then 50 by 80, 5, 8 is going to give me what? 40. So it's going to give me, that's 5 years before 40, right? So it's going to give me 4,000. I hope that is clear. And we also have 100 backpacks by what? 90 Ghana cities. That's what's going to give me 9,000. I believe that is right. Sure. And then we have 60 by 85. Let's see 60 by 85. 60 by 85. 60 by 85. 60 by 85. Let's see. I'm checking with my calculator. You can also do so with your calculator. 50 by 85. So sorry, 60 or 60 is 60 by 85. So 60 coming 60 multiplying 85. In my case, I had what 5100. So 5100 and then 40 by 75. Then I arrive at I think it's 3000. Check and let's see 3000. I had 3000. Let's see. Let me check once again. So 40. 40 multiplying 75. So I had 3000 in that case. So, so once you're able to get this individual cost from these different periods, you add all the costs here. So you're going to add 1400, 4000, 9000, 5100, and what? 3000. At the end of the day, you should be able to get the total cost for all these different periods. So let's do the addition. Let's do the addition. So with Mike is 1,400 plus 4,000 plus 9,000 plus 5,100 plus 3,000. With Mike is I had what? I had 22,500. Let's see what I also had the same thing. So this is going to be the total cost for all these what different periods, okay? And now they also need to add their total what back pass we have quantities that we have in stock or the inventory we have in stock. So 20 plus 50 is going to give me 70 plus 100, 170 plus 60 is going to give me what? Two, I think 230, right? 230 plus 40 is going to give me 270. So I'm going to have what? 270 as the total backpacks we have for the period. So now, once you're able to get this down, 
then we can say that the average cost is going to be the total cost from these different levels divided by the total quantities from these different levels, total quantities of backpacks. So it's going to be 22,500 divided by 270,000. And then that should give you, so let's see the division. So with my case, when I divide 270 by 2,500, I had 83.33, so the three are reoccurring, but in CDs we have two decimals, so we're going to shorten this as what, 83.33, can I say this? I hope that is clear. So that is the value of the inventory asset using the weighted average with respect to pair what back pass so now for you to get the total value for the 70 back pass that was an ending inventory you're gonna tell us that therefore at 70 at 70 backpacks at 70 backpacks your total cost or total value the total value of the inventory is going to be 70 multiplying or the unit or the average cost for each backpack is going to go at 83.33 at the end of the day you should be able to arrive at so just multiply multiply by 70 so let's see 83.33 multiplying or 70 in my case i had 5000 833.10 so that's what i got for the value of for the 70 backpacks using what the weighted average so all i need to do is first of all compute for the individual cost from these different periods with respect to the quantity and also once you compute that you add all the total cost from this event and also add all the total quantities from this period okay and you divide the total cost by the total quantity whatever you're going to get is why we're going to use what value the inventory whether it's an ending inventory or whether it's a sales if you are issuing it's, a, it's an issue that you are saying or it's a sales then use that price towards multiply the quantity you are issuing and then you get the value of that inventory in that case so that is for the weighted average method if you have any question please let me know before we move on to the first in first out method of valuing inventory if there was any question, please let me know before I continue in that case.
so when it comes to first thing further, I think my mic was off, so I need to check it out and see the way forward. Because I'm coming, let me check this before. Hello, I hope you can hear me. So when it comes first in first out, okay, the idea is that whatever comes in first will be the one should be issued out what first. Whatever comes in first will be the item to be issued out what first. So inventory that we receive earlier will be the first inventory to be issued out or will be the first inventory that we will sell to our customer. Exactly. So this method assumes the natural flow of goods through inventory in such a way that first goods to arrive are the first goods to what to sold. Is that okay? So that is the first one. So under this method, the most recent item bought by a company remains in the inventory for long. Is that okay? It remains in the inventory. So whatever that came as the last inventory or less as the last order, is going to remain in the inventory until those inventory that came as earliest is going to be the order that are going to issue to our customers. So whatever came in as recent will remain in the inventory until all the Orders that came in earliest has been what issued out or sold. Is that okay? So that is the first in first out method. So now let's take an example. We have to determine the value of the 70 backpacks remaining in the inventory of KB and gliding limited using the first. So we are making reference to this question, right? That if you are to use first in first, so the idea is that we have we have sold all these backpacks and we are left with what 70, and we are told to use what? first in first out method so how do you go by the first in first out method in that case so now if that is the case if that is the case let me wait something for so that you get to understand what we are doing here oh let me let me let me remain it let me have it remain all right so let's see so the idea is that we have we have we have sold all these goods we have sold all these goods right and we are left with our seven so we are talking about first thing so let's see so you can see that from this information the earliest or the earliest batch of backpacks that is within the inventory of the stores of the business is what the 20 backpacks right at the price of 70. so this one is off 70 at the price of sold to add a quantity of what 20 backpacks is off. Then you also have what 50 at 80. We have 50 at 80 also what off. So we have also sold this. We also have 100 backpacks at 90 also off because we were told that we were left with what 70. Is that okay? So let's see. So mean that the 70 is going to be found within what July and what October, right? As what an ending inventory. I believe that is clear. So meaning that here, for us to get the 70 as the ending inventory, meaning that we sold just 30 backpacks on what July and we're left with what 30. Because here you have a total of 60. Is that okay? So meaning that when you add the remaining 30 at the period of July to October, so which is 40, you're going to leverage what 70. So in using the first in first out method, meaning that we first of all sold the 20 backpacks. And then when it when it was done, we came back to the January own, and then we follow seal to the March, and then we came to what July, and we sold what thirty of them, and we were left with what thirty together with what the October. So for the October's own, we couldn't we didn't even touch it. So we just left because that's why we were left at the end of the day. So meaning that if we we are left with seventy, the seventy is going to come from July, so we just what thirty. And then October of what 40 that will make it what 70. So the first thing first our idea is that whatever quantity comes in first will be the first quantity which are issued out. So here when we were selling it out, we first of all sold what 20, 50, 100, and then we were left with 70. And then we said the 70 is coming from July and what October. So to find the value of what the 70 ending event using what first thing first out is going to be the price of what July, which is what 85. And then the price of October which is 75, which is spread the quantities at these different what levels or at different what period. I hope that is clear. So in doing so, 
we can say that we have for 30 backpass at the price of July is what 85 so 85 85 Ghana cities is that okay and then so that's going to give us an extension and also have what 40 at the price of 75 that's was from October October which is this 40 is that okay right so in that regard I can say that so let's see 80 multiplying what 85 let's see the 30 multiplying 85 let's see the outcome so 30 multiplying 85 in my case I had what 2550 2550 and also when it comes to 40 multiplying 70 I had what so let's see from here so 40 multiplying 75 I had 3000 so I had what 3000 so now the value of the ending inventory which is a 70 backpass using first in first item is going to be what 5550 Ghana cities so that is the ending inventory when you are using what first in first item method method of what stock or inventory or valuation so that is that if there is any question please let me know before i continue in that case So that is first thing first. Whatever comes in first will be the one to be sold or to be to be sold out what first. Is that okay? So here we assume what the natural flow of what goods. So it's like more like let's say you want to buy a fruit and then you go to the seller and they'll tell you that hey he or she will not tell you, but then you know that if there was an a fruit that was left out of yesterday, that would be at the first seat. That you're gonna see they're going to see they're going to sell those what uh fruits out first before those that came in the day that you you went out to buy what that food is that okay so that's how it happens in a, in, a, in a world of business that's how you see it at any time they will prefer to i mean they will prefer to sell out the goods that was left at a particular period when they sell those out after that that's where they're going to sell what any other goods that they receive during what that period that they are engaging in their trading activity so that is the particular example that you can think of when it comes to first thing first out whatever came in first will be first what issued out so let's take note of that so let's, let's move on to the opposite of the first in first out the opposite of first in first out we call the last in first out the last in first out so this also is the opposite of first in first the idea is that here, whatever came in the most recent would be the inventory order going to what? Sold it out. Is that okay? So the last and first our idea is that here, whatever came in the most recent batch of inventory that you receive will be the inventory that when it comes to sales, you are going to what? Issued out as what? A production. Or as let's say, yeah, as a production when we are selling out of our inventory. Whatever came in what? Last will be the inventory word first issued out so that's why we call it last in first out means that whatever came in last will be the first inventory that we're going to what we're going to sell it out to our customers or issue to what our customers is that okay so this method assumes a flow through which invent in such a way that goods remaining in the inventory are the first goods purchased is that okay so we said that in first in first out goods that came in most recent will remain in the inventory also those that came in earlier have been what i mean have been sold is that okay but then here the idea is that whatever came in last will be the first person will be the first sorry inventory to be what to be sold is that okay right so that is last and first our method so the most recent one will be the inventory we issued out to our customers i believe that is clear so that is last in first out so this direct opposite of what direct opposite to that of the first in first out method I believe that is clear so using the same example from kb and gliding within we asked to determine the value of what 70 backpass in the inventory of kb and gliding within method at the end of the year using what last in first out method so here too here too the goal here is that the goal here is that let's go back to our question the goal here is that here you ask yourself you ask yourself what is the most recent inventory you have in stock here? 
what is the most recent stock we have here what is the most recent stock we have here so we can say the most recent stock we have here is on what in the period of what october which is what 70 back pass at what 75 what ghana cities i hope that is clear so what is the most recent inventory in here so that's october right so in this case so in this case in this case because we have the most recent inventory as 40 back pass at the price of seven that's the, that should be the one if you are to sell it that would be the inventory or back pass going towards sell is that okay so in this case we are told that we are left with was 70 back pass as ending inventory or closing inventory for the period so at the end of the day for us to use the last inference of method of valuing inventory this is what you're going to do meaning that all this inventory that we have in stocks when we were engaging in the selling right of these back pass we first sold sorry 40 back pass at the price of what 75 is that okay so when this batch of inventory was done we went on to sold that of 60 back pass at the price of 85 and we also went along to also sold that of 100 back pass at the price of what 90 because we were told that we were left with 70 inventory as an ending event meaning that those ending events going to be coming from january which is what 50 back pass and that of what 20 back pass at the beginning of what the period as the beginning of what inventory with respect to their various what prices so to find the value of inventory 70 back pass at the end of the period using last and first out is going to come from the january own which is 50 and that of what beginning inventory for 20 back pass I believe that is clear. So that is the last inference. Whatever came in last will be the first order to be issued or you sold to our customers. So you see that was that was why when it comes to the selling, I mean actually they sold all this and then using the last inference out, it was the 40 that actually went off first and that followed by 60, followed by 100, and then we were left with what 50 at January and then 20 at what beginning inventory. That was why we were left at 70 back pass with respect to their various work price. So in doing that, in using last thing, first our method, meaning that here we're left with what 50 at January, right? 50 at January. Let's see the price. The price was what 80. Is that okay? So it's going to be what 50 multiplying or 80. Is it 80 or 85? Let's see. Yeah, it's 80. It's 80. So 50 multiplying 80 and then 20 multiplying what? What was 20 on? The price was what? 70. Okay. 70. So it's going to what? 70. That was what the beginning. Beginning inventory. Is that okay? So 80 by 5 is going to give me. So going to give me what? 4,000. Is that okay? And that of 20 by 7 is going to give me what? So 20 by 70 is going to give me 1,400. So I don't know, for me to know the value of inventory, the 70 back pass using last and first, is going to be 5,400. 5,400, what can I say this? So that is going to be the value of the inventory using the last and first out. So meaning that we sold all the recent what, stocks or inventory that came in as the as the recent i mean you sold, you sold all the recent stocks that came in right before the those ones that came in as what the earliest what inventory is that okay and then those ones were they were having as what a closing stock using the last in first out method i hope that is clear so that is the last in first out method so when it comes to last in first out method, the idea is that those ones that came in earliest as earliest batch of inventory remain in the in, remain in, I mean in the in, in, in stocks before those recent ones are what sold and that that doesn't when it comes to in business in real life business that happens in that way they will prefer that those inventory were left from previous period are sold first before the inventory we receive now are actually sold is that okay but then here is that really opposite they prefer that they will actually sell those that we receive now as against those that we're having in previous what period so that is the last and first half method of inventory evaluation so let's take note of that let's take note of that so let's move on to so if there's any question please let me know before i continue
So there's something that you need to know. So realize that when we were using the weighted average, we were having a total cost of what five thousand eight hundred eight hundred thirty three point what one. So let me write it here so that we make some decisions here. So using the weighted average cost method, we were having five thousand. Let me raise something here. So we're having five thousand eight hundred and thirty three point what one zero. And when we're using the first in first out method in terms of what the stock valuation as ending inventory, we're also having let's see, we're also having here to be five thousand five hundred and what fifty. And when we're also using the lethal last last in first are we also having what five thousand four hundred. So you ask yourself, you ask yourself, you ask yourself, you ask yourself that hey. You are having different kind of what results when you are using these different methods of value inventory. You ask yourself, the big question you ask yourself then is that which of the methods is the best when it comes to inventory valuation? You ask yourself which of the methods is the best when it comes to inventory valuation. What will be your answer to this? What will be your answer to this? You will ask you which of which of them is the best method to use by what the company? Which of them? So here, the answer to this question here is that. There is none of these methods that is the best. It all depends on the nature and the policy of the organization or the business in question. Is that okay? It all depends on the policy and the nature of the business in question. So, whatever preference that the business will place, I mean, will go for, will determine the method that they will use. So, we don't have any of them as the best among others. No. It is only based on the preference and based on what the nature of the business that will determine which of the method that they will go for it. Is that okay? So if let's say campaign A and A will go for weighted average cost method, fine. That is based on the nature and then the policy of their business that will make them choose what weighted average or first in first out or last in what first out. So there is nothing like the best among what these what method that you can use. So as you can see here, as can be seen above, the value from each item is different. The big question that as, I, as I pose here is that which method is the best and which one should be used by organization to determine the value. So let's see the response. I think I gave the response, but then let's see what I have for you here. Unfortunately, as I said, there is no one method that is better than what the other. The preferred method is to be determined by the company. And as I said, it is based on the nature and the policy of the organization in question or the business in question that will determine the method that they will go for. But however, we have some few indicators that can help a business to choose at least the method that they go for it and then that will also help to mitigate costs and also to increase our profit. So these are some of the few indicators that you can think of when it comes to using whether you want to go for weighted average cost method or first in first out or last in first out. These are some of the few indicators you can look out for it in that case. So one, we can talk about when the when the market is stable, actually when the market is stable and prices do not fluctuate, all methods give the same what inventory value. That's why we are saying that when the market is stable in terms of when prices do not fluctuate, when there's no inflation and prices are constant throughout what the period, then we are saying that when you use all the methods, gonna give you what the same what inventory value. I hope that is clear. So price fluctuation when there is no inflation and price are stable, right? When you use all the methods, gonna give the same what inventory value. But then in an unstable, the OCT is that in an unstable market or environment where prices do fluctuate ups and down, ups and down in prices. Tomorrow you hear that price has increased. Today price was what 50, then tomorrow is 60. Mean that at that time the market condition, the market environment is not in terms of the pricing system is not stable. And so therefore, which method will be at least used so that it can help you as a business to mitigate costs and also to what enhance your profit. This is what you're going to do. You're saying that in an unstable market prices, where price keep on changing or price keep on fluctuating, when you use the weighted average method, it helps to smoothen what the pricing system and as a business it helps at least to mitigate your costs, reduce your costs and also to make what, some profit for the day. Is that okay? So when you use weighted average cost method, it helps to smoothen out what inventory values that might result from what price what fluctuation. When you use weighted average, it will help to stabilize what price fluctuations. 
in an unstable what, market what, environment. I hope that is clear. And also, when you also use what, first in first out method, the idea is that the first first in first out method results in inventory value that mostly, that most closely reflects what the current replacement cost of for the inventory. Is that okay? So we realize that with the first in first out, what came in first was the whole value. So at that time, if let's say the price, if let's say we're having price, but the, let's say the price is increasing, you have a rising price of increase, right? When you have to use the first investor method, it helps to reduce cost because at that time, the cost that you incurred in purchasing what the inventory was lower than what you have currently as the rising price. Is that okay? So when you use that as a method of value inventory, it's going to reduce your cost. Is that okay? But then when it comes to last investor out, because currently what we have, let's in terms of rising price, we have as a as a price is higher than what we actually purchased in previous time when you're using last in first time in terms of rising price your cost is going towards increase and that going to reduce your profit but in terms of rising price when you're using first in first out your cost is reduced and your profit is increased because the idea is that when you first purchased the inventory it was at a lower price, but then now the price has increased. So when you want to value your inventory using the first in first out method, your cost in terms of your cost, overall cost is going to be low and your profit is going to be enhanced. That's the profit is going to increase. When you are using last in first out, since you are using the current replacement cost, the current replacement price of the inventory is the same price going to use at the end of the day, your cost will increase and your profit towards will reduce. Is that okay? So when it comes to Last, in terms of the rising price, we cannot talk about the opposite. In terms of falling prices, when you use first in first out method, it results towards high cost and profit is reduced, right? But when you use last in first out in terms of falling prices, your profit your profit is increased, but your cost is what reduced. Because at that time, the current replacement price, right, is lower than the cost that you incur to acquire what the inventory in the previous what time. Is that okay? So these are the scenarios that we can think of when it comes to actually determine which method you want to use as a business or in question. Is that okay? So what is required is that I don't really what is required is that the business need to state the method that they are using in their financial statement, right? To tell the public that this is the method that we're using to value what our inventory. As a business, you must state it if you are a public company that you have been registered to publish out your account to. The general public, you need to state it out. You need to state it on your financial to tell us that this is the method that you are using, so that as we users of what financial statement, you can make decisions based on that. So that is something that we need to know when it comes to determination of which method to go for when it comes to inventory value. So this is our try question. I think we'll solve this question when you are done with the other methods. So if there was any question, please let me know before. I continue in that case. If there's any question, please let me know before I continue. You want to finish out with the method? I think we are left just two and then the turnover. Then we are good to go. So we'll finish very soon. So if you just join us, we are discussing inventory control. We are discussing inventory control. And we have talked about what inventory control is. We have talked about what inventory is. Inventory control. We are talking about some methods that we can use to value inventory, inventory valuations, and other stuff that you need to know. So, if there's any question, please let me know before I continue. Let's keep sharing so that others can also join today's section so that we can all learn together in that case. So, let's move on to what we call the gross profit method, and then we come back to the retail method. So, here I want to use so I'm not about to explain this so that you get to understand it. When it comes to retail, when it comes to gross profit method and then the retail method. Let's see. Okay, let, let me use just this to do that. Let me use just this to do that. Let me use this board. So when it comes to the gross profit, the gross profit method of valuing inventory, the idea is that here you want to value inventory at their cost right using what a profit margin or profit markup please get this right when it comes to gross profit method of value inventory it follows an order where you as a business or let's say you are in charge of what, the inventory system within the organization 
you want to value your inventory and using gross profit method here it comes to it comes into case where you are using a margin or markup concept in addition to the cost concept in addition to the cost concept. so here it combines both for cost and profit ap ap approach in valuing what inventory is that okay most of the time for to find the ending inventory within the space of what the business or activity so let's see how gross profit method actually works here so now when it comes to the gross profit method of valuing inventory you go through some steps some process before we can value our inventory so first of all if the business have any beginning inventory we also call it as opening inventory if they the beginning have if the business have any beginning inventory or opening inventory you must state it in your so we're going to have a statement called what trading account so you're going to have a statement called what trading what account trading account so on this trading account you're going to have your currencies down here so let's say you have two currencies please follow me carefully stay carefully here please make sure to like this video and share with your friends as well make sure to like and share with your friends let's share and then like if you haven't subscribed subscribe to the channel so that we can get more engagement on this video right so when it comes to the gross profit method as we are saying we're going to use a statement called trading words account or a trading words statement as an account is that okay so the first thing that you need to know here is that if the business have any beginning inventory or opening inventory you must state it is that okay so you ask yourself if there is if that we have such as inventory existing then you need to state it so it tells us that beginning inventory let me use shortcut bi or closing words inventory you state it is that okay sorry beginning inventory or opening sorry not closing opening inventory you state it there is that okay so at the end of the day you ask yourself is the beginning inventory or the opening inventory you have is it enough for you to help you as a business to deal with your operations in terms of for sales for the period is it enough the question you ask yourself is it enough if it's enough fine you don't engage in other purchases but if it's not enough you're going to engage in other purchases you're going to purchase additional what, stocks or additional inventory to be part of the beginning inventory so you also are what we call what add purchases so we add purchases where the beginning inventory the, or the opening inventory in, in a business are not what enough for you as a business to deal with when it comes to what, sales i hope that's good so you add what we call your purchases so add purchases so i'll present as what p add purchases so you also add purchases so when you add purchases the result becomes what we call the merchandise or the goods that is available for you to or to sell so we call it merchandise available available for what sales so the addition of what beginning inventory plus any additional purchases it are it's result to merchandise available for sale or goods available for sale that's what we have that that's the, the goods that you have that you can sell to what your customers at that at that spot or at that time is that okay so when you add any open inventory plus any external purchases to the beginning inventory whatever you whatever you arrive as an addition between the opening and then the purchase you arrive with your merchandise available for what sales and as the name suggests this represents the total inventory you have in stock that is available that's at your disposal as a business that you can sell to what your customers I hope that is clear so in doing so you ask yourself the big question you ask yourself here is that were you able to sell all this inventory if the question is yes then there wouldn't be no ending inventory but then if you couldn't be able to I mean sell all then it has what no mean that they're going to go to an ending what inventory so if the question is no then there's what we call an ending inventory so you're gonna subtract your ending inventory or closing inventory from your merchandise available for sale so you less it so you less what closing what inventory so in less than it you subtract put in bracket right so when you subtract the closing inventory from your merchandise available for sale you arrive at what we call your merchandise your merchandise was sold or we call it what cost of goods was sold your merchandise cost of goods sold. your merchandise cost of goods sold so m merchandise mcg or x merchandise cost of goods was sold so that's going to be your 
merchandise cost of it. So this is going to represent your cost. So as I said, the gross profit method of value inventory takes into account the profit aspect of the company and the cost to value the inventory. Is that okay to value the inventory? So we call this closing inventory as for the ending inventory. So this is how you find the ending inventory and you're using the gross profit method. But that is not enough. So once you're able to get to the once you're able to get to the merchandise cost of goods sold, the next thing you ask yourself here is that at the end of the day, the, in question, you're going to be giving what, what we call the net sales or the sales for the period. Is that okay? And also going to give what we call a profit margin or markup. Get this right. Margin, margin or markup. Markup. There are some tricks that I need to know. Profit margin or markup is actually a profit. When you hear of margin or markup, you are talking about what? A profit of the company. And what is that? You can represent as what? A margin or a markup. The question will give you was your net sales and then the margin or markup. Most of the time it's in percentage. The margin of market is going to be in percentage. Most of the time going to be in percentage. I think when, whenever you hear of margin, you are talking about a profit element that has been expressed on what? The sales or the net sales of what? The business. Is that okay? Whenever you hear of margin, you are talking about what? A profit element that we express on the next sales of the business. That is expressed on the next sales of the business or the sales of the business or the revenue of the business. But when it comes to markup, markup is applied or expressed as a percentage profit expressed on the cost of the business, the total cost of the business. Is that okay? So let's say in question we're giving markup. So mean that if you want to express your markup as a percentage to get your profit, you're gonna apply it on what? On the merchandise cost goods, merchandise cost of goods what sold. That's where you can apply your markup on. But let's say you are giving margin, then you're going to apply it on your net sales or your sales or revenue for the period. So margin is expressed on what? The sales or the net sales for the period as a profit. And then markup is expressed on the cost. That is the merchandise cost of goods sold of the business. I hope that is clear. But at times, at times in question, they can actually come up with their own condition that, hey, you know that margins applied on what sales and markups applied on cost but hey we are not allowed to do that we are going to go over around i mean you are going to go at that way way around in that way meaning that if they want you to let's say apply markup on sales and as a condition they have stated that let's say this percentage is applied on what sales as a markup fine so far as you know the principal rights we know that you know so don't worry just apply whatever the question asks you to apply it and you are good to go is that okay? This is what I'm saying. Now let's say you know we have let's say 25% markup. 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 Is that okay? Markup as what well, a profit. And you know markup is applied on what? On the cost of what the business. And they are telling you that apply 25% as a markup on what? Let's say the sales. Fine. So far as you know it applied on your cost and they are telling you to apply it on sales. Just apply it on the sales and you are good to go. I hope that is clear. Or let's say you are giving 30% margin and you know margins applied on all sales and they are telling you to apply it on what on cost just apply it on cost and then you are good to go but where no other condition is given and the question is silence as to whether which which percent uh, which uh, item should you apply your percentage profit on it you need to follow the principle saying that margins applied on sales and markups applied on what on cost so that is the principle that you need to know so enough of this Let's get into real deal. So here, once you get to your, once you get to your, once you subtract your ending inventory from your merchandise available for sale, you arrive at what we call your merchandise cost of goods what sold. And that is going to remain here, here. So at the end of the day, the question will give you what for your net sales or your sales for the period in figure, and then also it also will provide you with your percentage markup or what margin. And then once you do that, you're gonna form an equation here. Realize that for me to get my profit, my profit is going to be what my sales minus what my cost, isn't it? So profit is going to result to sales minus cost. So for me to get my profit or loss, it is the comparison of what your net sales for the period. As against what your cost for the period is that okay so that is how we determine that so if you are fortunate to be given a percentage as a markup or a margin if it's just say 
10% markup, then mean that for you to get your profit, you're gonna apply 10% on what? On the cost, which is what the merchandise cost of goods available for what? Merchandise cost of goods was sold. That's going to be your profit. Is that okay? And then you, you get to know of what your sales for the period is that okay and then your cost so at the end of the day once you get to know your, your profit let me present it to all you so that you understand what i'm saying better so when you get to the retail method you move with super speed you move with super speed so let's take note of that you move with super speed so i'm coming let me do this all right so in this case let's see so once you get your profit after applying, let's say your ten percent markup on the cost of merchandise cost of goods sold, you get your profit, right? So we are saying that for you to get your profit, sorry, for you to get your profit, your profit is equal to your sales minus what your cost of what your merchandise cost of goods was. So that means that's what C to make it simpler for you, right? So once I will get what my ten percent markup, so let's say ten percent what markup. 10% markup on my old cost. That's going to give my profit, right? And I know it's going to be the same thing as sales minus cost. I hope that is clear. So once you're able to get your profit, fine. Then you start to what? Well, at the end of the day, your ending inventory wouldn't be given to you. So you expect to use this method to get your ending inventory. So once you're able to do that, you will be able to what? Get to know of what? Your total what? Merchandise cost of goods also in terms of figure because I know they you wouldn't be given the ending inventory. So your cost of merchandise cost of goods wouldn't be enough for you to make a decision as to know as to whether you're going to get arrived at your ending inventory or not. Is that okay? So once you're able to get your ending your merchandise cost of goods in figure, you tell us that your merchandise cost of goods sold is going to be what the same thing as what your merchandise merchandise available for what sale minus what your ending inventory ending inventory so once you're able to know this once you also know this you can easily find what your ending inventory by saying that your ending inventory by change of subject right so then it's going to be here it's going to be your merchandise available for sale minus your merchandise goods what so merchandise cost of goods or so then you are good to what go so this is how we determine what the ending inventory using what the gross profit so it's actually very simple get to know of your opening inventory right if there's any purchases you add up to your opening inventory in a rival report your merchandise available for what so and less your ending inventory as I'm saying, your ending inventory will be given in the question. So you follow this method and you apply the percentage on whether it's on on the cost or on the sales to get your profit, and then you start to go back by applying what some equations. So you know that profit is going to give you what your sales minus cost. Once you would get your cost as your merchandise cost of goods sold, you come and derive another equation that your merchandise cost of goods is the same thing as what your merchandise cost of goods available for sale minus your ending inventory and you make your ending inventory as a subject and you're able to find your ending inventory in that case so that is how when you are using gross profit method of value inventory this is how it actually what works so let's take note of that let's take note of that if there is any question please let me know but one thing you so need to know here is that in every question you will be, you'll be given or in real life situation you'll be given a record of what the company's opening inventory and if there is any other purchases to you're gonna be giving so that is going to be given to you but then as to whether to know the profit and then the ending inventory you need to complete it yourself as uh, an inventory manager so that you're able to know what you have in stock for a particular period of time please if there is any question let me know before we draw the curtains to that end So that is how we engage on with the gross profit method of valuing inventory. So the beginning inventory and the amount of purchases are taken from the company records and the cost of goods sold is normally determined by applying the rate of markup on the net sales in that case. So let's take note of that. So let's take an example. So we come to the retail. The so retail too, we are just dealing with what the selling price. I'm talking about the selling price of what the goods, then you are good to go. 
go. So let's take an example here. Let's take an example. So inventory of August 31st was 24,200. During the next four months, during the next four months, during the next four months, the company had purchases 42,500. And the next sales, as I've indicated, the next sales is what? 52,800. Use the gross profit method to estimate the value of inventory on 31st October. If the company uses a markup of what? 25% on the selling what price. So you see what I said. You know markup is applied on cost, but then I. They are telling you that you need to apply 25% on the selling price. So here you have no other option but to what? Apply 25% on the net sales or the selling price of the business. That's all. Is that okay? But where there wasn't any condition given, you are supposed to apply the principle that markups applied on course and then you have applied it on course and then you are good to go. I hope that is clear. So that is the way to go when it comes to gross profit method of valuing inventory. Right. So now, let's see how we can deal with this question. We are asked to use the gross profit method to estimate the value of inventory as a top two. So we are talking about what ending what inventory. So this was the beginning inventory, August 31st August, which is 24,200. Ending inventory, that's why we are asked what to work it out. So first thing, you need to compute for your merchandise available for sale. So we are saying that to compute for merchandise available available for sale is going to be your beginning inventory if you can remember plus any purchases if your beginning inventory is not enough for your operations for that period so we add what purchases so now let's ask ourselves was there any beginning inventory yes there was beginning inventory of what 24,200 is that okay plus was there any Purchases for the period, yes, during the next four months, the company had purchases of what? 42,500. So now this is going to be our merchandise available for sale. So now let's add 24,200 plus 42,500. How is going to be the result? So 24.2 plus 42.5. I arrived at 66,700. So that's what I arrived for, my merchandise available for sale. So once you get your merchandise available for sale, the next thing you ask yourself is for you to compete for your merchandise cost of goods sold, cost of goods sold, it is your merchandise available for sale, right? Minus your ending inventory. If you can remember from here, the equation that we were driving, so we said for you to compute for for you to compute for your merchandise cost of goods sold is going to be your merchandise available for sale here. Yeah? Merchandise available for sale here yeah, that I'm talking about, all right, minus your ending event. So that's what we are applying in this regard. So let's take note of that. So let me have it here. Where is it? All right. So that is how we determine what our merchandise cost of goods sold. So merchandise cost of goods are going to be merchandise available for sale minus your ending inventory. Do you know our merchandise cost of goods sold? No. Do you know our merchandise available? Okay, that is yes, but we don't know our ending inventory. So we need to also derive another equation. We also get to know that for me to determine my profit, my profit is going to be my sales minus what my merchandise cost of goods sold is that okay right so in that regard enough of that we can say that let me bring it here we can say that we can say that now we were told that the company used a markup 25 percent on what on the selling so that is our profit right so therefore we can say that our profit is going to be 25 percent 25 percent on the selling price or the net sales for the period is what 52,800 so what is 25% on 52,800? So 0 0.25 multiplying 52,800. In my case, I arrived at a profit of 13,200. 13,200. So that's my profit, okay? So once you would get your profit, then we can say that, then we can say that, we know our profits, we know our sales. Can't you find our merchandise cost of goods? So we can do that. So we can say that from the profit equation, we can say that profit is going to what? So let's make merchandise cost of goods 
so that's what the subject is that okay so let's do that oh come on oh right right let's do that let's do that so we can say that if you want to make merchandise cost of goods sold is going to be so merchandise cost of goods sold is going to be per the profit equation here is going to be so we're going to bring this we're going to be sales minus what your profit what was my sales for the period it was what fifty two thousand eight hundred right minus my profit of what thirteen thousand two hundred so I don't day when I subtract my profit from my sales let's see what we'll we will get for the period so 52,800 so with my case I arrive at 39,600 as my merchandise cost of goods sold so 39,600 so once you're able to get your merchandise cost of goods sold then we can come back to the merchandise cost of goods sold equation as the equation what two from here so therefore we can say that for us to determine our ending inventory using the merchandise cost of goods equation gonna make ending inventory as what well, the subject so ending inventory ending inventory is going to be so here we are making ending inventory here the subject so it's going to be it's going to be so we are going to subtract so we're going to make ending inventory as a subject right so here you're going to make ending inventory as a subject so here is going to be any event is going to be your merchandise available for sale minus your merchandise cost of goods sold merchandise cost of goods sold sold merchandise cost of goods sold so now i can see that my merchandise available for sale was what sixty six thousand seven hundred and i'm also i also having a merchandise cost of goods sold as well thirty nine thousand six hundred so at the end of the day you should be able to arrive at your ending inventory as so my ending inventory for the day is going to be 66,700 minus 39,600. So I'm going to arrive at 27,100. And it's going to be my ending inventory for the period. And that's how can we calculate your ending inventory if you are using the gross profit method of what valuing inventory. It makes use of what your profits and your cost. To determine your ending inventory. So, if there is any question, please let me know. Before we we'll continue in the light. So now let's get to the retail part so that we we'll draw the curtains. And the next time we meet, we will talk about the turnover. Then we are done for inventory and turnover so when it comes to the retail method to actually here we value inventory at, the, at their retail price that's more like their selling prices is that okay of the item so here realize that with the cost profit with the gross profit method we're using the cost base to what value the inventory when it comes to the retail price the opposite we are using the selling prices or the retail price to what to value what the inventory so in doing that for you to actually determine your ending inventory for the period this is the format that you follow. Always ask yourself, is there any beginning inventory for the period? If there is no, if you have the beginning inventory, then it should be at retail, it should be at selling price or at retail price. Then you add your purchases. If the beginning inventory for the period is not enough to help your operation for the period, you need to what? Engage on any other external purchases and you add up to your beginning inventory. I believe that is clear. So at that one, it should also be at retail, means at what? At selling price. Is that okay? So you add your purchases are selling price or at retail to your beginning venture also at what at retail or at selling price and at the end of the day whatever you're going to arrive is the same as your merchandise available for sale and that one also should be at what at retail or at selling price and for you to get your ending inventory you subtract your net sales which also should be the same as the selling price from your merchandise available for sale at retail and you get your ending inventory so here our ending inventory can be derived as our ending inventory at retail can be derived as our merchandise merchandise available for sale minus our net sales for the period minus our net sales for the period. so meaning that our net sales is actually our merchandise available 
available for sale minus our ending inventory. So you realize that when we're using the gross profit method of value inventory, when you subtract the ending inventory from the merchandise available for sale, you get what your cost of goods, merchandise cost of goods would rise. But when you are using the retail or the selling price, at any time you subtract your ending inventory from the merchandise available for sale, you get what you call your net sale for the period. You get what you call your net sale for the period. So that is the assumption here. The assumption here is that when you are using retail, it works at what a selling price. But when you are using the gross profit, you are dealing with what cost. So if you realize when we are subtracting the ending inventory from the merchandise available for sale, we are getting what merchandise cost of goods. So when you are using the gross profit method, but then because we are using the retail method, when you subtract your ending inventory from the merchandise available for sale, you get what we call your net sales for the period. So let's take note of that. That is very important that you need to know in that light. In that light. so let's take note. So this is what I was saying. When you subtract your merchandise. Ending inventory from merchandise available for to get what your merchandise cost of goods sold when you are using the gross profit method, right? When you are using the retail, you get your net sales for the period. So let's take note of that and make sure that when you are using the retail method, the company in question or the question actually will give you two actually prices in terms of it's going to give you the selling price and then the cost price, more like the retail price and the cost cost price so if you are using the retail method we expect you to go by using the retail prices to value what your inventory at the end of the day so let's take note so let's take an example let's take an example let's take an example so last example here then I think we have last one we'll look at that one next time so when it comes to the retail let's take an example here at Melcom stores, inventory on April, that's 30th April, was valued at 12,000 Ghana CD at cost and 16,000 at what retail. This is what I was saying. They'll give you two what, prices, one at cost, one at retail. Because you are using the retail method, you're going to use the retail price to deal with it. During the next month, the company made a purchase of 20,000 at cost or 40,000 at retail and had a total net sales of 42,000. You have to use the retail method to estimate the value of the inventory at retail on July, so that we are talking about the ending what inventory we said to find the ending inventory. Ending inventory is always our merchandise available for sale minus what our next sales. I hope that is that's what we said. And how do you derive our merchandise available for sale? We said our merchandise available for sale when you are using retail method is going to be your beginning inventory at retail plus your purchases also at retail. So was there any beginning inventory in the question? Yes, that was at retail of what? 16,000. So it's going to be 16,000. 16,000 plus purchases at retail of what? 40,000, which is what? 40,000. I believe that is clear. So at this point, you should arrive at 56,000. That is your merchandise available for sale at what? Retail. I believe that is clear. So once you're able to get your merchandise available for sale, then you ask yourself, was the net sales given in the question? Yes. So that was also given at what? At retail. We know that the net sales was what? 42,000. So for me to get my ending inventory, then I can say that my ending inventory is going to be my merchandise available for sale minus my net sales. I believe that is clear. All right. So in that light, I can say that my merchandise available for sale was what? 56,000. Right? Minus my net sales, which is what? 42,000. So, 42 compared with 56 is going to give us what? I think it's going to give us 14. So, 14,000. Let's see if that is true. I think so. It's going to give us what? 14. So, 14,000 at retail is our ending what? Inventory. And this is our coming value inventory using what? The retail method of what? Stock valuation. So, that is something you need to when it comes to the retail method. Let's get to the latter part of the valuations, and the next time we will talk about the inventory turnover. I think that one's just some 20 minutes exercise, and we are done. Next time we will talk about that one too in that light. So let's keep on to like and then share. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that once we go live, you get it right away. I believe there is no question so far.
So when it comes to the lower of cost or market value, it's also another way that we use to value what inventory. We are saying that the lower cost or market value here is where inventory is valued at lower of cost to market what value. So here, for you to value inventory, you compare the market value, which is what the current replacement cost of that item as against the average cost that the business will compute, whether using the average cost method or the FIFO or the LIFO method. Is that okay? So you compare the average cost method as against the current replacement price of the item that's called the market value. And which of them is lower? Which any of them is lower, you go by the lower cost or, or the market value and then use that one to value your inventory. I hope that so sometimes you are saying that sometimes in business the market value or the current placement cost of goods is lower than the original or the average cost. Most companies therefore will prefer to show the lower cost or the market value in their inventories. So as I'm saying, as always, if you have the two costs given, make sure that the lower of the two is in taking and then use that one to I mean value your inventory. So we are saying that when the market value exceeds the cost, the cost is used and the opposite is true. When the cost exceeds the market value, the market value is also what used. So that is the lower of cost or the market value method approach. By the end of the day, if let's say the cost is not given, you expect as an inventory manager or as a practitioner to compute for the cost using the average method or the FIFO or the LIFO method of course, is that okay? And then always your market value for the inventory is going to give me because I don't know when you make any purchases or any actually purchases from external, you're going to be giving the prices for the purchase or the item. So that one is going to give in to you. So you compare that market value as against the average cost that you're confusing the average cost method, FIFO or LIFO, and then you compare the two. So any of them which is lower, you select the lower one then. Use that one to value your inventory. So you compute the extension amount for each item based on the lower amount, as I said, and then you sum up all the extensions for different levels within the period. Then you are good to go. So that's the lower of cost for the market value here. The lower of what the cost that is the average cost and the market value is selected to be used as to value what your inventory. I believe that is so. So let's say if I have, let's say for example, I have my market value to be let's say six dollars six dollars and let's say my average cost to be let's say five dollars so ask yourself which of them is the lower that is what average cost of what five so i'm going to use the average cost of five dollars to value my inventory for the period so always look out for the two which of them is lower and apply it on then your quantity that you are talking about in question and then you get your extension for the period. so this is just a brief description of what we are saying. So going back to our first example, I think that was what we were, where we were talking about the inventory sheet format. This was what was given. So we are asked to compute what the inventory valuation using a lower cost method approach. So here, for you to compute, you ask yourself, you have the unit price of 36.14, and you have the unit price at the market price of 35.50. So which of them you go for? So the lower for the two, so I'll go for what, 35.57. I'll multiply by what, the quantity, and I'll get my extension for ignition terminals. I hope that is clear. And when it comes to the next item, headline, headlights, sorry. You have the unit price of, as the average cost of what, 9.97, you have for the market price of 11 cities. So here, which of them will you go for? The lower of the two, which is what? You go for 9.97. I believe that is clear. And you go for, Odometer cable, so we follow the same suit here to you go for what the market value of what 4.70 and then on and on and on. Whatever you select as the lower of the cost, you multiply by the quantity or the item in question so that you get the extension or the amount for the period. At the end of the day, you sum up all the extension from these different items, then you get your total value of the inventory in stock. In stock. So that is how can we apply the lower of cost or the market value approach in valuing inventory. So this is what we bring our name to, to session one of our inventory control and then turnover. So our next section looking at competing for what inventory turnover that's going to what we're going to discuss just some few 20 minutes and we are good to go. So hey thank you for watching this video or this presentation. If this video was really helpful to you please go ahead subscribe Make sure to like this video. Please like this video. 
so that we can get more engagement so that others can also get a chance to visit the channel to also to learn from us make sure to like this video share with your friends and subscribe to the channel so by this way once you go live or release your any new video you'll be the best person to get it right away so i will see you in the next video where we discuss computing for what inventory turnover and session two of our discussion on inventory control and turnover so thanks for watching thanks for watching i'll see you bye bye